I've always been a scrawny kid since I was in elementary school. Granted, due to my semi-decent sense of humor, I was never bullied. But to the opposite sex, I was never determined attractive or dateable. Friend zone was the national. I inhibited until the age of 25. I was completely fine with it. Of course, I crave the attention when it comes time for the homecoming dance or prom, but I always managed to get a friend with me to help me out of my pity party. After high school, I went to a local college and graduated five years later. I ran out of funds, so I worked the sales after my sophomore year to make enough money to last for two more years. On my graduation day, I looked back on the years I spent in college and immediately felt regret. Every day after my classes, I would just go back home and eat dinner with my parents and go to my bedroom where I would spend the whole night surfing the web, surfing the web and reading. I made a couple of friends and had a date that ended terribly, but I just felt like I never truly utilized college for all it's worth. I was, I was accepted in, into an out-of-state college, but I decided against it because I didn't want to go get far out of my comfort zone. Same. After college, I tried to find a job that went along with my major, English, and I found it was pretty much impossible to get a teaching job in the town I lived in. After four months of looking for a job, I decided that any job was good as any... After four months of looking for a job, I decided that any job was as good as any and went to a local elementary electronics store for an old job back. The manager was more than happy to take me back, as I was the top seller every month I was there. I don't like to go back to make friends. I don't like to go out and make friends, but I was definitely good at making people spend their money. When I came back from my first day back, three days later I realized that I was a completely different crew except the manager. There were three salesmen, Mac, Vance, and Jonathan, and the manager, Anthony. But I came back in I came back in was before I came back in, Mac was on the top salesman for the past six months and was automatically did not eat and we automatically did not like each other. Vance was the lowest salesman, but he always clean, cleaned the shop up and made sure all of the inventory was correct. Johnny Thing was the middle tire salesman, and we became best friends. There really wasn't much talk about the old sales. People came along looking for X objects, and we sell them X objects while at, trying to add on some access, accessories. Sometimes we would get them to loosen on their original budget and go for a higher, higher end deal. That is about as far as the sale really got to me. It got me a paycheck, and I could pay the rent for my mother and father suddenly started charging me. Three weeks into it, into working, where Jonathan asked if I wanted to come over to his house and hang out and drink a couple of beers. I agreed after work, and we went there and turned on a couple of movies while downing beer after beer. After about three hours, I decided it was time for me to go home, but Jonathan rationalized with me and the dangers of driving drunk. He brought out two, two pillows and blankets. He pointed to the couch, and I sat back down. He put the blanket and pillow beside me and told me goodnight while I walked back to while he walked back to his room. I decided I don't know when I fell asleep, but I remember snapping awake. I had this thing ever since I was young where I'd, I would slightly open my eyes in case it was it's already bright, but I found the room was completely dark. I slightly glanced up trying to figure out where I was, but but when I but what I saw made me close my eyes completely and started shaking a little. Jonathan was standing in the hallway, hallway, staring at me. I waited for about 10 minutes and slightly opened my eyes once more to see that he was going back to his room. The next morning, I woke up to smell of bacon. I quickly got out of bed and went to the kitchen. He was cooking and, and looking normal, like his. He was cooking and looking like his normal self. So I just made my paranoia, par, paranoia, paranoia slide off and asked him if we, he needed any help. With a wave of my wave off his hand, he told me to sit down and enjoy my hangover. I sat down on the couch while he was done cooking and we ate bacon and pancakes. We went to work right after breakfast and by the end I completely forgot about him staring at me in the middle of the night. The next week he asked, he asked me if we wanted to go to a club an hour away from us and without hesitation I told him yes. I told him that I would wear my black suit to look extra spiffy and while laughing he told me he would pick me up at, from my house at 10 p.m. Around 10.15, I heard him honking and I went outside and got into his car. When I saw him, I met, I had to take a double take. He was wearing the same exact thing as me, black suit and a white button-up shirt. I just decided to ignore it. We got to, we got to the club at, a, at 11, right as the doors were opening, and before it was midnight, I was having the time of my life. For the first time in my life, I was meeting girls that seemed to take interest in me. I even got to dance with a couple of them. 
The only thing that threw me off was that Jonathan seemed to be staring out every single girl that gave me a slight bit of interest. At two, Jonathan came to pick me up and told me that it was time to go and at, time to go home, so I went to the bar to pay off my tab. While I was paying my tab, a girl that I danced with earlier came up to me and slipped a piece of paper in my pocket, while giving me a slight peck on the cheek. I know I blushed, but I maintained my composure enough to give her a wink and a little smile. When I got into my car, I took, a, I took out the piece of paper and showed Jonathan. Nearly bounced into my seat and saw excitement, I told him that I was definitely a girl that I would not mind dating. He asked me what she looked like, so I told him that she was a little shorter than me, brown hair and green eyes. Then I started to explain to him how pretty she was, but I noticed that he had changed expression from happiness to what seemed like anger. The whole car ride was filled with awkward, awkward silence and sideways glances towards Jonathan. I felt like I had gotten a bit too weird for me, so I started to avoid him at work. It worked for, a, for the first three days, but I noticed he had started to follow me around. When I was driving home, I would see his car from a distance away. Sometimes when I was lying in bed, I could... I would spot a set I would spot a set of eyes coming from the set of trees in front of my house. But every single time I would walk up to the window, I would see the eyes vanish. I don't really know if it was him until I saw I didn't really know it was him until I saw a figure with bright green eye bright green shoes run down the street. I know Jonathan is the only person I've ever seen wear bright green shoes and running as well. They were the shoes he wore whenever he went out running or whenever he was he was exercising. I decided that the next day would be the best day just to approach him and tell him that I noticed him following me after work and looking into my window. I was gonna tell him I was going to tell my only friend my only and best friend that I would really appreciate it if he could just give me some space until I thought he was back to normal. That next day the store was closed. The store was closed because Jonathan was found in the middle of the night by the police with a giant gaping hole in his chest. His heart was removed and placed in his mouth, where his heart should have been where his heart should have been was a credit card from the, our store. The magnetic strip was ripped off, and the name and card number had been grinded off, off into his stomach with a serious cut to reveal a note. Was it worth the sale? I know I wanted to give him some space, but I never wanted him to die. He was my only best friend, and the grief, with, grief that filled with my heart when my manager called and told me the news caused me to hang up on him and fall to my bed. With deep sobs, I felt the world was coming crashing down on me. And I never felt that I, and I felt like I, and I felt like he ever knew how much he really meant to me. Today is the day after Jonathan was found dead. I decided to go to the mall to clean my head. I went outside to my car and found a letter stuck in my car. I grabbed the letter and read it in my car. Hey Hyung, is it Hyung or Hyung? Hey Hyung, I'm sure you've noticed that I've been following you around and that I've been acting weird around you. I know on the first night you spent the night over, you saw me staring, staring at you on my couch. I just wanted you to know that the first week, Mac convinced the older, convinced an older, older woman to make an eight, $8,100 TV purchase using our, our store credit card. The next day, the woman came back with a TV. It had a big crack in the middle of the screen, but she told us all that came, that all, she. It had a big crack in the middle of the screen, but she told us told us all that it came that way. Normally, we just return it and get our money back from the manufacturer, but Mac did not want to lose our out of our commission. It was the last one we had in stock, and we wanted to give it, and he wanted to have an upper hand on you. She started, she started to beg and plead to just take the TV back and let her buy a cheaper model. She had told him that she didn't even have the money to pay the monthly bill. He just told her she was out of luck and made her take the TV back to her car. That night, she killed herself. She was clutching the remote in her hand and had an empty bottle of pills in her right hand. The daughter came in three days later. It was your day off, but Mac was there. She went up to him and told him about the death of her mother. She didn't seem sad, but I could tell she was not here to ask what could be done with the bill. With a smile, she asked who the salesman was, and the motherfucker told her it was you and described what you looked like. With a smile, she, she skipped out the door and drove off in her ranch sedan. When you spent the night, I woke up to the sound of a car engine starting up at 2 a.m. I looked at the window and saw, I saw the same red sedan. When we were going to the club, I saw the red sedan following us. When you described to me about the girl that gave you her number, it matched what exactly how she looked. I just wanted to make sure you were safe, so I followed you home and I kept watching you. Tonight, 
I invited her over. I took the same paper she wrote you her number on and texted her. She said that she would be there at 2 a.m. I know I may not be alive when you read this, but I want you to know that I love you, man. I know we haven't been friends for long, but just know that I acted like a creep around you because I wanted to make sure that you were safe.